today is Pentecost Sunday, which is uh, the celebration of the birthday of the church, basically, traditionally. And uh, Janet read for us the passage in, in uh, Acts 2, the Holy Spirit unleashed and God's people, and uh, everybody thought it was a little wacky, but um, the church began at that point. And, um, I, whenever Pentecost Sunday comes around, I think of something that happened a few years ago, several years ago, um, with my life, probably a long time ago, Billy Graham uh, went and did a, uh, what was considered at the time a radical visit to some uh, communist country. I think he went to the former Soviet Union and, and met with underground church leaders and preached and shared. And when he came back to the United States, people were angry. It was like they were furious. There was an outcry of uh, protests and uh, <coughs> thinking he'd lost his mind. And uh, the New York Times ran an uh, uh, editorial in which the uh, critic was saying that Billy Graham has set the cause of Christ back 50 years. <laughs> and, and Billy's response to this was, I feel so much shame that I set the cause of Christ back 50 years. I meant to set it back 200 years. <laughs> <laughs> And that, to me, is what Pentecost is. How do we go back to what God's dream for us was? And how do we uh, experience anew uh, the life and the forgiveness and the hope and the power of the Holy Spirit at work in us? Now, we, uh, we're in this new series this summer on uh, the Psalms. And uh, um, we're going to look at Psalm 139 um, today because... It seems to me that we live in a, a time of uh, incredible opportunity for communication. You notice that? I mean, you, you people communicate with you, you don't even want to hear it from. And, uh, and there's so much uh, information going on and going out. And, but it seems that we're increasingly getting shallow in our relationships. And um, while we may have more communication, we seem to be having less and less intimacy. And um, like, like uh, about a month ago, I passed a landmark. This is like a lifetime goal. Over a thousand Facebook friends. <laughs> and then it hit me. If you have a thousand Facebook friends, you probably have no friends. <laughs> right? <laughs> Because it's just, you know, you need to hear some pictures. Uh, nobody ever shares deeply or personally or intimately on Facebook. And so I went, well, why was that such a big goal? Well, it's probably because, you know, like some of you, I prefer short-term shallow relationships <laughs> because they're easier and intimacy is much more difficult. And this is a Westfallism, so it's true, but you may not agree with it. We can only love someone to the extent that we know them. And we can only be loved by someone to the extent that they know us. So if we let people know us a little bit, they can love us a little bit. You know, Facebook level. If, if, uh, if we let them know us a lot, they can love us a lot. And when they know the good stuff and the difficult stuff and all of that, we might find that we're loved regardless. And this Psalm 139 goes right to the heart of what it means for us to experience God's love for us regardless. So uh, follow with me if you have your Bibles. Lord, you have searched me and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out, my lying down. You're familiar with all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you know it completely, Lord. You hem me in. Behind and before, you've laid your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go to the heavens, you're there. If I make my bed in the depths, you're there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me, your right hand will hold me. If I say, surely the darkness will hide me and the light becomes night all around me, even the darkness will not be dark to you. The night will shine like the day, for darkness is the same as light to you. You created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. 
My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in a secret place, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. How precious to me are your thoughts, O God. How vast is the sum of them. Were I to count them, they'd un outnumber the grains of the sand. When I awake, guess what? I'm still with you. If only you would kill all the wicked people. <laughs> <laughs> Away from me, you bloodthirsty men. They speak of you with evil intent. Your adversaries misuse your name. Do I not hate those who hate you? And I abhor those who rise against you? I have nothing but hatred for them. I count them all as my enemies. Search me, O God, and know my heart. <laughs> Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there's any offensive way in me. Lead me in the way everlasting. That's all of life, isn't it? So Lord, teach us from your word. Teach us from this psalm how we might be known by you and, and experience your love and your spirit in a real, honest, authentic way. Amen. Well, I got to tell you, this psalm to me is one of the most meaningful personally, uh, to the extent that I think that over the last, I don't know, 35, 40 years, I have read this at every memorial service for every person who's passed away that I conducted their service, I've read this song. Because it means something. It begins, Lord, you've searched me and you know me. And remember, we can only be loved to the extent that we're known. And this is, this is letting us know of God's incredible, not just that he has a passing knowledge of us, but, but you've searched us. You, you, you know, in fact, look at, look at these words that, that he used. You've, you've searched me, you, you know, you perceive, you discern my path, you're familiar, you know it completely. Think of this whole string of words right here. How, how else do you want to be known or discerned or perceived? And I think it's such a great, uh, important, significant part of our life if, when we realize that God knows us and loves us anyway. And loves us totally because he knows us totally. Now, if we're in a relationship, an intimate relationship with God who knows us and loves us and searches all those things, what, are the, what do we lose in that? What, what do we have to give up? Control. Ah, oh, yes, you get an A. Control. Because the very next portion of this is, where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee? Where can I hide? How can I get away from you? How can I have some me time? <laughs> right? I'd like to have some portions of my life where I'm in control, Lord, and you don't know. Right? In fact, I don't care if you don't love me in those parts. I just want some things, you know, you know, like some, some, some of you have man caves. Well, I don't know what the equivalent is for women, <laughs> but um, tree house. <laughs> but um, <laughs> where can I go? The point is nowhere, nowhere. We have to give up our fantasy that we can find a place where we can have some peace and quiet away from God. Now, we've reversed this in a lot of ways in our lives, and we've made it, you know, I'll have my world, and then for about 50 minutes on Sunday, or maybe an hour, depending on what time I get here, uh, I'll let the Lord have his way in that, okay? But then I'll go back to my world and my way. This says, uh-uh. Or like I have to, I tell our dog Maggie, who has a personality disorder, whenever I don't want to do something, I go, ah! <laughs> because the trainer said, when you say no, it's just, nah, 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 nah. <laughs> it doesn't mean anything to the dog. So I say, ah! And that's what God's saying right here, right here in the Hebrew, ah! <laughs> there is no, when you, when you rise in the morning, I'm there. When you go to sleep at night, I'm there. You think you're hiding in the darkness? No, it doesn't matter to me, I know you. We give up 
not just control, but we give up the dream of control, which may be a bigger sacrifice. And then there's the gains again. What do we get? We got God's love, He knows us, He searches us, He knows our heart, all those things. What's the other game? The realization that your life matters, that, it, that you are not an accident, but that your life matters. What's it say? You created my inmost being. You knit me together. I praise you because I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. Now, last week, remember, we, we looked at that, uh, that visual image of God saying, I've tattooed you on the palm of my hand. I've engraved you, your life, on the palm of my hand, right? So it's a vivid image. Now it says, another vivid image, all the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. In other words, your life has purpose, it has meaning. And you may wonder, what's going on now? Or why, why is that happening? Or how could this mean anything? And, and we may not know, but the assurance is, you matter. Your life has incredible matter. And then when I awake, I'm still with you. I'm still with you. I think that, uh, Sometimes it's easy to lose sight, uh, particularly when we go through some difficult times. And, uh, and when we're hurting the most, it's easy to think, well, it just doesn't matter. Uh, how, could, how could God have a, a hand at this or control of this? Why, why is this going on around? I guess I'm irrelevant, right? And, and this psalm is this assurance. No, 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 no. You're not irrelevant. You matter to God. You're fearfully and wonderfully made. Now, we get to this, and I go, you know, this would have been a great place for King David to stop the psalm. Right there. He said it all. You know, God's love, his knowledge of us, his seeking us out. Uh, we lose control of our life, but God's right there with us no matter what, and, and there's a purpose in it. Wouldn't it be great for him to stop it, you know? But no, he had spiritual ADD, and he had to go on. <laughs> if only you would just kill everybody who I think is wicked. <laughs> now that is a prayer. So I wanna, sometimes I want to pray the Psalms, you know, <laughs> as a spiritual discipline. You know, I'm not naming names, you know. <laughs> Lord, if you would just wipe them out. I hate these people. But, and you know, I love that, that uh, the writer of this psalm does not hide his hatred, right? Doesn't cover it up with a little blaze of, of oh, well, you know, let's all be, we're all good spiritual people, you know, and uh, let's keep those happy thoughts. It's like, boom. Kill them all. I have a pure hatred for them. You know? <laughs> Claim it, you know, not just I'm, I'm irritated by them or this frustrates me. It's, I have a pure hatred all the way through. And then I think, why is this here? Why is this here? It's because of something that we lose. We not only have to lose control, here's another thing we lose. If we're going to be known by God and loved by God and discover our life is purposeful, we have to lose our naivete. We cannot go along superficially and shallowly going, oh, life's good, everybody's good, we're all getting better and better, you know, blah, blah, blah. It doesn't work that way. We have to give up on our false sense of innocence and come to grips with some real life realities. One of them is the reality of evil, <clears throat> which we don't like, you know. I, mean, I remember uh, I, was at a, I was on a mission board with, with Robert Schuler, Sr. And, uh, and 
and someone asked him, why, why is it that you never, ever, in all your ministry, you have never mentioned sin in your sermons? It's in the Bible. Why is that never mentioned? And he paused thoughtfully as he went, and he went, I don't think sin goes over that well on television. <laughs> He's probably right. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> By the way, well, at least he's intentional about it. You know, he knows what works for him. And, and I thought, the psalmist is not afraid to say, let's look at reality here. There are people who are enemies of God. There are people who are enemies of me. I have nothing but hatred for them. I'll count them as my enemies. If they hate you, I hate them. And, and I, I believe that God's saying, you know, we, we've got some dark places in our life. We've got some things in our life that, you know, we, we hang on to and right or wrongly and, and we've got attitudes. We don't dare cover it up and pretend otherwise. Or we go back to shallow, superficial Facebook level sharing. May we never be a Facebook level sharing church, okay? Would that be all right? I mean, it's okay that we're friends on Facebook and all that stuff, but I'd rather actually be your friend, but that's different. So then it comes back at the very end, and I love this little twist. It's, it's the twist of, of surrender, really. After kind of blurting out their hatred and venom and wanting God to kill everybody, you know. Which I get that way sometimes, you know, particularly on Thursday nighters, I don't know. And um, search me, O oh God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts, my fearfulness. See if there's any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. You know, it's interesting that this psalm begins and ends in a, in a parallel way, but a little bit different. How does it start in verse 1? Lord, you have searched me and know me, right? That's the beginning. And now it comes to the end. Lord, search me, know me, right? It's gone from a declaration of what God has and, and is doing to a surrender. I'm inviting you to do this. I want you to know me. I want you to know all of me so that you can love all of me so that I can know maybe for the first time that I'm loved regardless. So lead me in the way everlasting. I love this song because I think if we, if we can grasp what, what the essence of what the psalmist is saying here, and begin to pray that ourselves and recognize the incredible love that God has for us, that the relentless pursuing of us and all the twists and turns that we try and do to keep control of our life, um, that our life had meaning and purpose before we ever figured out something to try and do, that we matter to God. And we can be real and honest about how we see things and feel about things and react to things, and surrender <coughs> and invite God into our life and say, Lord, come in and have your way with me. Lead me. Lead me in the way that's everlasting. I believe that it takes us all the way back to Pentecost, all the way back to the Holy Spirit unleashing the, the, the church for the first time, and we become different people. And we become set free. Now, I've got a homework sign for you that I'm not kidding about, okay? And that goes for you on the video, too. Okay, so, um, I need you to do this. We're in this experiment together of going through the Psalms this summer. So here's what I... Uh, oh, see, I want to say I'm commanding you to, but I'm going to be nice. I'm, gonna, I'm asking you to do this, okay? <laughs> but I'm really serious. <laughs> and, um, don't make me hurt you, you know, if you don't. So, uh, I believe that the Psalms are the hymnal of God's people, basically, have been for forever. But I also believe that God's writing new songs in us. Now, so here's what I'm requesting of you. Each person, I want you to write your own song 
for your life. It could be a psalm of uh, grief and pain or loss. It could be a psalm of praise and hallelujahs and rejoicing. It could be something in the middle. It could be uh, revolving around a specific incident in your life and how you, you saw God work or you'd like to see God work. We're going to see this summer that some of the psalms do that. They're from a particular event in life. Or it could be a general uh, expression of, of your uh, faith or your doubts or your um, questions. I, I did this a few years ago uh, at another place and, and somebody wrote Psalm Zero. <laughs> <laughs> and it was so interesting to me because in it he said, <clears throat> I'm not a follower of Jesus. I don't have any faith. I don't know that I believe in God. So I can't really start with Psalm 1 because I'm not there yet. So I'm starting with Psalm 0. And he wrote the most beautiful uh, psalm about how far he still has to go. Right? And I thought, how honest and creative and powerful is that? Right? So... I'm not asking. I'm telling you. <laughs> I really want you, to, and I want you to email it to me. It's on the back of the uh, programs, John Westfall at jwestfall.com. And for those of you watching on YouTube, you don't get out of this either, okay? I want your song, wherever you are, and, and email it to John Westfall at jwestfall.com. And each week we're going to read a few of these, one or two of these, and start to hear how God is working in each of our lives. Now, I'm happy to protect your name, that's okay, we don't have to use names, but to know what God's doing is and to start to hear the psalms of, of God's people. And if people send them in from the YouTube, then we'll read those too. Is that a deal? Okay. Now, I'm not kidding. <laughs> I really, really, I really am looking forward to this because this is where we start to hear each other share intimately. Not just Facebook level. Now we start to share intimately. Here's how God's met me. Here's where I need God to meet me. Either or both. Okay. All right. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you for this day. Thank you for the commitments that you've made to us. And Lord, we pray that you would lead us in the way everlasting. We thank you and praise you that you seek us and there's nowhere we can hide from you. And that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. Now take us from here and unleash us as your people, like you did on that very first Pentecost. Send us out in your spirit and in your joy and in your purpose. And we'll give you the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.